For 170 years, Britain has mourned a hero. HMS Victory, the ship in which Nelson scattered forever the fleets of Napoleon Bonaparte at Cape Trafalgar, is still lovingly preserved by a nation not normally indulgent to its heroes. What schoolboy, having learnt of Nelson, has not heard of HMS Victory's famous captain? Thomas Hardy lived aboard Victory, at least, in style. In Hardy's cabin, as elsewhere, meticulous attention is paid to historical detail. The table Lord Nelson used at sea. But on the deck above, on the 170th anniversary of Nelson's death in battle, a touching little ceremony is enacted. On the morning of Trafalgar, Nelson's famous signal was run aloft. England expects that every man will do his duty. The message was relayed to every man in the fleet. Almost exactly at noon on the 21st of October, 1805, the opposing fleets became locked in bloody conflict. At 1.30, a French sharpshooter stationed in the mizzen top of the redoubtable fired. Nelson fell, mortally wounded. At once, midshipman Pollard took revenge on the French sniper. Today, on the exact spot where Nelson fell, a wreath is reverently laid. Although surgery was then so crude that the complaint was often preferable to the cure, instruments were neatly arranged and ready for emergencies. The dying Nelson was hurriedly carried below, three decks down, to the midshipman's berth. Here, surrounded by his weeping officers, he died. Such was his popularity that it was feared news of his death might affect the course of battle. But by then, England had won the day. Napoleon's sea power had been crushed forever. Trafalgar and the death of Nelson had become a part of history, a favourite story told and retold. Nelson is held in unique reverence by Englishmen the world over perhaps no less now than on that bloody day he died long, long ago. And with his memory is joined the name of his flagship, the proud old wooden wall that made his genius possible. At Brands Hatch in the south of England, the victory of another kind